All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, degenerates, everybody is welcome here to the session. We have a great, great session here planned for you today with Chris. I was just on, I was just talking with him earlier. You guys are in for a treat, okay? So big shout out to all the folks that are watching here already. Um, let's see, we got Alex in the house, Andrew, BJ, good to see you, Camilo, Har, Hassan, Randall, Ted, Thomas, Shayla. All right, we got a packed house today. So folks, I'll let you know something here really quick. Chris Capri, lead trader, lead educator um, at the Benzinga Option School, former hedge fund broker. He's traded on the option side. Uh, JV from, hello from Ecuador, what's going on? Um, we have an international, an international community here, but, <clears throat> but yes, Chris Capri is the top options person you do want on your corner when it comes to trades, when it comes to education, he used to train the broke, the new brokers at the fund. So, um, you guys are very lucky that we were able to get Chris on one of these sessions. Um, for those that are learning the trade options, I really, really think you need to get with Chris. We'll put a link on the chat. Um, so I think that we do have uh chris capri in the background but of course we have to bring in chris the right way let's go ahead and make that happen folks damn son where'd you find this all right all right chris can you hear me <laughs> i'm liking the new intro how are we doing hey hey what's up man um i know that man the school is it's 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 just like amazing right i get emails every day of people that love the school you know hey chris saved me from doing this mistake or uh, he put in some killer trades. Uh, I mean, you have an amazing boy. It's like 72%, 70% PNL. You've been trading um, in funds. So you have that background, institutional training, institutional mindset, Chris. It helps a lot for the retail traders. Yeah, you know, so I've been trading for 22 years. I've been a broker on the Wall Street. I've been a trader for hedge funds. So I've been on the sell side and the buy side. And I've seen it all from some of the best traders in the world to some of the worst traders in the world you know, over the last two decades. And, you know, in terms of options, you know, I feel like I bring kind of a unique experience of really focusing on option flows and how we can use that to kind of understand what's going on with the movements of today, which we're going to talk about soon. But, you know, just to just to get the feedback, like my students, you know, are constantly using me to get feedback on their trades. They have trade ideas and they use me as a chance to analyze their trades in live classes every day. So that we can help them either say, hey, this is a really good trade here based upon this, this, and this, or I would avoid this trade based on this and this. And so, you know, trading is one of those things where experience matters. You know, it's uh, we saw that actually in the World Cup, which is going on right now. You know, Japan uh, in the, what was it, round of 16, went up against Croatia, went to penalties. Croatia has experience with penalties. They went to the finals, you know, the last uh, 2018 World Cup. And Japan really didn't have much experience with that. And so, you know, Japan, they totally kind of flopped on stage. They did great in the regular game, but then they flopped on stage really sad. I was hoping they'd win. But then at the same time, the Croatians kind of showed how experience matters in those moments and allows you to see things that you can't learn from a book. So, yeah, that's what I bring to the table right. really for our option traders <laughs> in the school. I mean, you don't know what you don't know, right? And, and that's the thing. Um, is that, are, do you, are, did you hurt your shoulder? Is that, that's your microphone, right? Okay, I thought you had like a, like an armband or something on your shoulder. Oh no 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 armband no no no. Okay, that's my uh, that's my mic. Okay, cool man. So um, all right. So Khaled says hello from Morocco. Omodo, hi from Nigeria. I'm telling you guys, like I have a lot of friends in Nigeria. I'm not even kidding. Like I have a lot of friends in Nigeria. Apparently, uh, Rudolph from Belgium, uh, Invention Doll from New York. Guys, this is an international community, and it's great, right? Everybody brings a lot to the table. Um, Chris, I, let, before we do get this up, I just want to ask the folks here uh, really quickly, guys, um, if you've been here before, if you watched any of the sessions before, uh, put a two in the chat, put a one if it's your first time attending one of these sessions um, so that we just kind of know how to steer the conversation. We don't want to overwhelm people. We want everybody to feel welcome. And, you know, it's Christmas time, right? We want to help you make some money. So, all right, we got a bunch of ones there. In the meantime, while the folks put in those numbers, Chris, can you give us a brief background on um, uh, on your experience in Wall Street? I know you, you've been, you know, deeply, deeply in the institutional world with options, but for the folks that are watching here for the first time, if you could just give us a quick brush on that. Yeah, so shout out to all the ones who are uh, coming in for the first time. I'm checking in with you on Zoom and on Benzinger right now. We're also live on YouTube, so... 
So my name is Chris Capri. I've been trading for 22 years. I started basically my first year of full trading was the uh, beginning and end of the dot-com bust. And that was, you know, for probably many of you, that's probably like the middle ages when it comes to history. So it's a long time ago, <clears throat> but I've traded through three different major market crashes. I was a broker on Wall Street from 2004 to 2006. And within six months of becoming a broker, I was the number one broker at FXCM. So I started off as an FX broker on Wall Street, started in New York off the old slip office, which teased with Wall Street. And then I ended up going to the San Francisco office to help them build that out there. And so I specialized in the US and the Asian desk mostly, did some European markets, but mostly US and Asian desks at those time. After kind of climbing through the ranks in the brokerage industry and meeting a lot of industry professionals, I eventually got an offer to trade for a hedge fund. And so I did that in 2006 after two years in the brokerage industry. And that was a fantastic experience because we had all kinds of talented players. And yet we also had a lot of new hirees, new trainees that we had to raise from the ground up. And so I got to work with like old veterans. And then I also got to work with a lot of, you know, new people who are coming up in the industry. And so I've been doing this for an incredibly long time. I've traded through some sort of market crash or major event every two years six major, you know, bear market, three major bear markets of those last 22 years. And I've seen it all. You know, I've worked with some incredible clients, some of the best traders of the 70s, 80s, and 90s who are moving into Forex in the early 2000s. And I've really seen it all. We, you know, we got the chance to analyze our top traders at FXCM, see what they did in terms of strategies, what were some of the consistent habits and things that they did to continually make money trading, and then what were some of the habits that people consistently did to constantly blow up their accounts? And so that became a very powerful experience for me to kind of see like the contrast there between, you know, the people who consistently pulled in money from the markets and people who continually bled alpha out to the markets. And so, you know, that was kind of a transforming experience. But the one thing I learned is that the bottom line is order flow is what dominates the markets. And if you can learn how to see where that dominant order flow is, then you can understand what's going on for the potential day and how to trade that. And options gives a really unique opportunity to do that because options can kind of tell you where the orders are parked and how we can use that to trade based upon where the orders are parked, what the flows are doing for the day, and how the dealers are going to hedge their activity based upon that. So yeah, that's kind of my experience coming off of uh, Wall Street and in the hedge fund trading. Um. All right, so real quick before we move on, uh, let's see here. Um, we'll we'll get into some questions and Q&A in a little bit, but what I wanna do is take a few minutes to kind of talk about, I do wanna talk about option flows. I wanna talk about our methodology or my particular methodology I teach in the Benzing Option School. So I wanna talk about how we look at option flows as an opportunity to find trades in the market. But before we do that, I kinda wanna just talk about the morning market commentary that it gave today and how the flows there in this market commentary generated a trade idea, and then what trade we took based upon that, and how that trade's working out right now. So let me do a share screen here. Give me a second. Right, and Chris, and I don't know if you mentioned this, but I mean, you do have um, a pretty intense background in, in neuroscience. Yeah, I'm actually uh, going to a school right now. I'm in the neuroscience program at the University of Colorado. Um, I actually have a final tonight, believe it or not, uh, about four hours after this this webinar is done. So yeah, uh, I got a final today and I got a final on Monday. So I'm in the neuroscience program right now and focused on a behavioral neuroscience and trying to use that research in neuroscience to help understand traders, how they take risks, how they make decisions, what are the key systems in the brain that are involved in that, and how we can improve trader performance through understanding behavioral neuroscience. So yeah, that's... Uh, Yes, that's what I'm in right now. So, um, yeah, and so uh, you can see a lot of my neuroscience text behind me and all that good stuff, neurobiology, all that good stuff. But um, all right, so let's get into it, Sarah. You should be able to see my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. So every single day, Monday through Thursday, I do a morning market commentary about 15 minutes before the market opens. And this is for our Benzinga Option School members only. And what it does is it basically covers, hey, here's the flows from yesterday. Here's the positioning right now. And based upon these flows and how close they are to expiry and volatility and all these different things of positioning, then I make an estimate as to what I think the price action will be for that day. What is the potential range? 
you know, in terms of high to low, what are the key support and resistance levels, and then how we want to trade that on any given day. I want to talk about today's market commentary because it was pretty much on point. You know, if you were to become a Benzing Option School members, I think we have a special going on right now, Rodrigo. You have to talk about that in a little bit. But if you were to look at these market commentaries and then see how the price action played out for the day, you would probably see that on average, we're pretty much calling the flows and the direction and the ranges and the key support resistance levels probably like 80 plus percent of the time. You know, I'm willing to bet that if you were to like read through all these over like three months, you would see like, wow, that was pretty accurate on most days. So let's talk about today's commentary and what this kind of showed us here. So I briefly talked about the overnight markets. And then here's my first statement really on what I expect for today. We expect, here's the December 8th market commentary. We expect a range and corrective chop till tomorrow, which may garner reaction to the Michigan consumer sentiment number. So before the market even opened, 15 minutes, I said, hey, look, don't expect a big directional move today. Expect a tight range and chop on the day. We talked about our reasons for why, but then we said like that, this is the main thing here, which is that with that theory in mind, we want to sell vol at the edges of our range that we are gonna that we had kind of broadcast. So we want to sell volatility at the edges, and I'll explain what that means. And you know, we talked about it, which is quite fleshed out between 390 and 400. So basically, I looked at the flows from yesterday. And I looked at where the positioning is in terms of open interest, notion of gamma, and all these things. And then I said, okay, after looking at that, the chances of us breaking 390 and 400 on the day, even though it was only about 1.5% up or 1.5% down from the market open, I said, it's a very low probability event. And so because of that, I said, hey, we can either sell spreads with zero to one days to expiration. That's what DTE means on any push up or down, or we can sell iron condors. And then I talk about potential moves on the day. What do I think is the implied move on the day? And I talk about key support and resistance levels. So the main gist of this is that I'm saying, hey, look, based on the flows, based on positioning, we don't think the market's going to have any big directional move today. The flows are really strong between the 400 ceiling and the 390, and they're really fleshed out in between those two levels. So it kind of becomes sticky when that kind of positioning happens. If we know that we're going to likely be in a range for the day, well, then we should probably sell iron condors, or if we push up into that range, we sell call spreads. And if we go into the lower end of the range, we sell put spreads. So we're selling vol at the edges. Now, with that being said, what we did with our Benzing Option School members is going into the trade ideas, we did exactly that. So the market opened at 7.30 my time, Colorado. Within six minutes of the market opening, we posted a trade for our Benzing Option School members. This should actually be short. So we sold a SPY iron condor, we sold the 400 call, and we bought the 401, and then we sold the 390 put, and then bought the 389. For a 39 cent credit that expired tomorrow. Now, if you know anything about iron condors, this is basically saying like, look, we, you know, we're not going to break 400 or 390 today, and as long as the market chops in between that today, we're going to collect some theta decay on that. And if the market chops there tomorrow, then we get to keep the full 39 cent credit. All right. So now with that in mind, what did the market do on the day? Here's the five minute chart. Exactly what we said it would do. Exactly. Before the market even opened, 15 minutes before, just right about here, we said, hey, it's going to chop. It's going to chop. What did the market do all day today? Chopped. So I want you to think about what it would be like to every single day, wake up and 15 minutes before the market is open, get a report that tells you, here's where the positioning is on the flows on the S&P 500. Here's where the dealer and hedging impacts could be. Here's where key support resistance levels are. And here's the potential direction or no direction on the day. What would that do for your trading if you had access to that information five days a week? What would that do for your trading if you knew like, okay, I feel pretty confident that this is going to work out. And so what did we do? We sold, again, here's 390. So we sold that put there and then we bought a put below that. And then we sold the 400. So we sold the call there and then we bought the call above that to protect against that. Market chops and we collected theta on the day. That's, that's volatility collapsed. 
which means we made money on that selling an iron condor and we got to collect the theta decay on that. So we basically made money today without having to do a whole lot. Six minutes in the open, made our trade. That's our prediction for the day, done. So I want you to start to think about that. Like, what would that be like before the market opens every single day, getting a handle on what you, like what the S&P 500 might do? How would that help you generate trade ideas? How would that help influence you in terms of understanding whether you wanna be bullish, bearish, or neutral in the day? How would that help you kind of like come up with trade ideas to profit on it with that information on a day-by-day -day basis. That is the kind of stuff that we bring in the Benzing Option School. And it's all through a mef method of understanding option flows, positional analysis, and the reflexivity of options. So with that being said, give me a three in the chat if that makes sense to y'all, and give me a six in the chat if that doesn't. Whether you're in YouTube or in the Zoom, let me know on that. So three, if that makes sense, and give me a six if it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then ask your question with the six so I kind of can explain a little further. Chris Ritterman says threes, 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 sweet. 4.5, good answer, David. I like it. I like it. If there's a question there, David, you're welcome to ask. Uh, BLK Black Ops, uh, he said, do you only speak about S&P? Um, yes, for right now, because that's the largest option market. In fact, the SPIES has recently overtaken the SPX in terms of volume and flow as a whole. We can't cover every single ticker on the day. There's 30,000 tickers out there. The main thing is to cover what's going on in the largest market, because the largest market is going to have an influence on all kind, on every other everything below it. There, it's not like Tesla is going to dominate the entire S&P 500 for the day. It can have an effect since it's a top 10 holding, just like Apple can or Microsoft can. But the bottom line is, is that if Microsoft is having an incredibly bullish day, yeah, that can lift the S&P 500. But if the positional flows are what they are, the bottom line is the, the S&P 500 is going to have to respect that. At the same time, if Tesla is ripping on the day and yet SPY is selling off, that's going to offer a drag on Tesla. And so, yes, we only we, we cover in the market commentary the S&P 500. However, in the live classes, we cover any ticker that a student wants me to look at. Yeah, we have an open Q&A section in the morning classes. And any ticker or trade ideas that the students want to look at, we cover it. Yeah, so it's a great question. By the way, in Zoom, some of you are posting in the Q&A. If you can, do me a favor. Post only in the chat. I got four screens, tons of windows and stuff like that. And it's just a lot easier for me to just look at the chat. So who was it? Uh, anonymous attendee said, uh, he said, it's really a basic learning because I'm new here. It's all good. Uh, if you are new to options in the Benzing Option School, we have a uh, free intro to option series here. So we have an intro to option series, and then we have one for intermediate students that kind of gives you a slow leg up. We also have a free PDF uh, that is an introduction to the options market. So you can get access to that uh, by signing up for the Benzing Option School, even on the trial. But for everybody, if you can, post your questions in the Q&A. Um, all right, no questions in YouTube. Uh, let's see here, two questions in the Zoom chat. Let's see here, David Consulting says, I've done Iron Connors in my paper thinker swim account, but even when I stay within the chop, I don't make much or really lose much. Obviously a user error, but what do you do to make a little to make a little in the iron condor? So let's go over an iron condor real quick. That's a great question. And so let's go over an iron condor real quick. Let's get some of this space here. And we use this one that we did today as an example. So an iron condor is what we call a four-legged strategy. And that means it's composed of four individual legs of options, four single legs, right? And the goal of an iron condor is that we want to profit from the market if it stays in a range or the price compresses or it just stays between a floor and a ceiling, right? Markets don't always trend every single day. And so we need tools to make money if the market stays within a range. We can't just be always bullish. We can't be always bearish because the markets aren't going to do that. Sometimes they're just going to chop and we want to make money if that happens. So what is an iron condor? So it's a four-legged strategy and it's composed of selling a call at a place that we think is resistance. 
let me compress this chart real quick to kind of give this as an example. All right. So we thought 400 would be a pretty clear resistance that the market would have pretty much no chance of beating on the day. And we thought 390 was the same as support. Keep in mind, the market opened at 395. So it only had to move five points up or five points down to prove us wrong. And it couldn't do it on the day, right? So an iron condor here, if we think the market isn't going to break 400, we could just sell calls here and collect that premium if the market stays within the range, but we have open-ended risk if we do that. And so instead of just selling a call, we sell a call to collect the premium here. This is a credit. And then we buy a call just above it, which is a little bit cheaper for a debit. And the net effect is a net credit, right? Now, we also say with an iron condor, we say, you know what? We don't think the market's going to break 400. We also don't think the market's going to break 390 support. And so then we take this same strategy and we just use it for puts. We sell a put at 390, but we don't want to leave this open-ended because if the market does sell off, we have open-ended risk. You know, the risk could just continue to compile against us. So what do we do? We buy a put just below that. This one is for a credit. This one is for a debit, but it's less of a debit. And so the net effect is a net credit. So we get a net credit down here. We get a net credit above here. And as long as the market closes within those ranges, we make money on the day. That's it. We just have to let the market chop around. And I'm willing to bet many of you with enough experience could be able to predict some of these, you know, choppy range days ahead of time. A good example of this would be, hey, we have FOMC next, next Wednesday, right? December 14th. All right, so the FOMC is going to be huge because it's going to kind of give updated guidance and clarity on the rates going forward, right? Are they going to do 75 basis points? Are they going to do 50? Are they going to slow down the rate hikes? This has dramatic impacts to the markets. So if that's on Wednesday, do you think on Monday and Tuesday, traders are going to place big bets to push the market up or push it down? Not likely. So we expect this kind of compression to manifest, you know, possibly Friday, but Monday and Tuesday very likely, or at least Tuesday. And definitely Wednesday going into the FOMC, we expect the same price action. So this is just one example of how you can use iron condors to profit from when you think the market is going to chop ahead of time. So this is the essence of an iron condor. It's a net, we're selling this strategy, so that means when we sell options, we get a net credit for it. And if we're right, we get to keep the credit. So that is an iron condor. So does that make sense, David, about how to use the iron condor? That's the first part of your question here. The second question was how to use it. He says, thank you. Yes, much clearer. Okay, cool, cool. It seems like I got the question. All right, cool. Now we teach more sophisticated ways to use that in the course, how to extract more profit, how to understand each part of the, the structure, how to adjust it if we need to, how can we do it for you know, more credit, less risk instead of small credit, high risk. You know, So we teach that in the course there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it a cover call? No, we covered it in here. Does this strategy has assignment? It only has assignment if the market closes above your short legs. Your short leg is the short call or the short put. So if the market closes above 400, then there's a chance this can get assigned, but we have a long call at 401. So if the market closes above 400 and pushes above 401, we don't have to worry about assignment. We're protected. Same thing on the downside. The short put, we could get assigned on that if the market closes below 390. However, we have insurance for that. The long put at 389. So if the market closes below 390 and then pushes past 389, we don't have to worry about assignment on that side because the long put protects against that. So yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, we have in the Benzinga Option School, we have an entire lesson just on iron condors. So that is the um, option strategies level four. And we cover, we spend the whole lesson talking about two different four-legged strategies, one of them being an iron condor. Yeah, that's a great question. 
Uh, all right, checking with my YouTube audience here. Uh, Tommy's touch. I like the hands out there. Uh, Norm Foise says spy can be assigned to SPX. Can't. Uh, yeah, spy can be assigned because you can actually trade shares on spy. SPX is cash settled. Yeah. So uh, SPX can't. Why should I trade spy? Because right now there's more volume on spies than SPX. So overall notional volume right now is stronger on spies than it is SPX. There's more contracts, therefore greater liquidity, therefore probably better prices, therefore higher resolution data as to what's going on in the flows. So yeah, I generally prefer to trade spies over SPX, but SPX, also SPX, you generally need more margin to trade that. You know, if you were to sell spreads or something like that, you're generally going to be required a little bit more margin. So yeah, but everybody should trade in a way that makes sense for them. Some people will do better on spies than SPX, and some people do better on SPX than spies. So you just have to look at the data as to why you do that. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Um, answer those questions. Okay, two more questions, and then I want to move on to uh, a very important discussion we got into in the Benzinga Option School today. So uh, Dan Super DL Ninja, I love the name. Um, how accurate is Delta in predicting a stock being in the money, out of the money at 30 to 45 DT? Okay, this is a super important lesson. It's a great question, Dan. All right, so let's pull up an option chain here. All right, so... When you trade options, there's a delta attached to on the, you're going to see the option chain, the delta with any particular option. And so let's just say the market's open right now. Uh, let's do a December 9th option, my bad. or let's just do a December 16th option. Okay. All right. Doesn't matter whether it's 30 to 45 DTE or it's one DT or anything like that, basically. So let's say we're bought, we, we're thinking about getting the 396 calls which is a 51 delta. The 51 delta, if you are a mildly or beginner options trader, you will interpret delta as a percentage chance that your option expires in the money. So if I'm buying a 51 delta call, the general assumption, which is not totally accurate, is that, hey, I have a 51% chance of this call expiring in the money by the time of expiry. Here's the thing about Delta, and here's the important thing to understand about that. One, that 51% only represents a moment in time right now. Delta is always in flux. If the market's open, Delta is always in flux. So if you trade an option today that is a 51 Delta, it may not be a 51 Delta tomorrow. It may be a 45 Delta tomorrow. It may be a 30 Delta tomorrow. It may be a 60 delta tomorrow. So we don't want to make the mistake as a beginning option trader of thinking that delta means the percentage chance that this option will expire in the money because it only represents a snapshot of time right now. And so that's just saying, hey, based upon the Black-Scholes model in terms of the distribution of prices or the binomial, binomial options model in terms of the distribution of prices, that this is the probabilities that it will close in the money, but that only rec or represents a snapshot of that kind of idea right now. It doesn't necessarily hold in the future. So I never look at, and professional option traders don't really look at Delta as a percentage chance that your trade is going to expire in the money because it only represents a small moment in time. It's not static. Professional option traders don't look at Delta that way. So when it comes to, you know, a 30 to 45 days to expiration, one month, six weeks out kind of thing, Delta is not going to be a great predictor of that. Definitely not going to be a great predictor of that. And so it's important not to look at Delta as a predictor, especially something that far out in time that something is going to close in the money. Unless it's like some deep in the money, one Delta option or something like that. Like you have a 350 call you know, and it's like $46 in the money. Okay, the chance of SPY losing $46 between now and December 16th is like slim to none. It's like, that would be like a three, four standard deviation type move. Probably not going to happen. So yes, on the wings, 
that becomes a decent probability. But once we're closer towards at the money, it's not that really accurate in predicting it. It's a great, great question. Um, okay, two more. One question from YouTube, one question from Zoom, and then I want to move into a discussion we had in the Benzing Option School today. Uh, Lamusat says, what if we close in between the spread? Then you have a chance of risk of assignment, for sure. But you always have the option, no pun intended, to close the trade if you're worried about that. So let's say you do have, you know, you're short the call at 400 and you're long the call at 401, right? And what happens, Lamusat is asking, what if it closes in between this? It doesn't make it to 401, but it's above 400. You could get assigned on the short call. But at that point, you always have the option to just close it and not get assigned. You can do that. You can do that. You always have that option. You also, it's also possible the person who took the other side of that trade doesn't exercise it. So then you won't get assigned. So it just depends. Each broker is going to be different around that. But if you're ever worried about assignment, you just close it a little bit early. Yeah, maybe you lose money on this part of the trade, but you made money on this leg of the trade. So if you do it skillfully, you can offset that or avoid that ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Hey, Chris, uh, really quick here, man. I'm getting a lot nope. of questions here about the school. Um, yeah. Let, let me just go over this really quick here, brother. I know you have a pack session. Um, <clears throat> I just want to be able to you know, address these questions here really quick. Uh -huh. um, folks, again, thanks a lot for sending these. Um, all right. Let me just kind of go over this because I just gathered um like the most the most uh asked questions here one second yeah 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 um okay all right folks so i got it all pulled up here okay um so first question here are the classes with chris recorded yes all the classes that chris or will do including trade the open trading the open with chris capri um that is all uh recorded so you all of you guys will have access to it um as far as you know the folks that do join so yes the classes are, it's basically Monday to Friday. There's a variation in the schedule. I know that Mon uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Chris does trade the open. And then yep. of course, there's a lot of education. There's a ton of pre-recorded sessions, things that you literally don't know, because honestly, these are things that came from, um, from Chris's background here really quick. I just want to show them here, Chris, hold up. Um, can you see my yep. screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is a great thing. So whenever you're in the live class here, you just click live class. But as you can see, Friday, 10 a.m., I believe that's Eastern. I don't know if my, my, my uh, computer is... It should be uh, set world. to your computer. Yeah. So for some reason, my computer thinks I'm in California and I'm in Florida, which is like extremely... <laughs> Everything is like four hours behind on my laptop. I don't know what time it is, never. So Friday, um, 10 a.m., Monday, you can see 8 a.m., right? Um, Tuesday... 6.30, right? So you see 6.30, that's 9.30. Um, uh, Eastern, Wednesday, well, 6.30. Thursday, 6.30. So you have your full schedule ahead of you. Now, the other cool thing here are is the video library that Chris has. You can see there's a welcome video. There's pre-recorded lessons. And I'm just going to quickly glance over this because it's amazing. Option Greeks, understanding volatility, how dealer hedging market, how dealer hedging market gamma drives prices. Option strategies, level one, level four, level two, level three, understanding volatility, trading long, short volatility. Like these are things that as a retail trader, you, you don't know. You just don't know because these are strategies that Chris is bringing on from the fund world, basically. So you have pre-recorded lessons, past live recordings as well. These are different types of uh, content that you will have. Introduction series for people that are new to options, for people that are intermediate, how to execute the trades on Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim should be paying us for this. Um, literally, how to make all the trades, how to execute a single leg strategy, how to execute two leg strategies. Literally, A, B, Cs, man. One, two, threes, right? And then you have, so these are all videos that you have there, right? You also have the live trading room where Chris is basically posting in entries, exits, all that sort of stuff. If you cannot attend the live classes, no worries, okay? You have a live chat room there when everybody's asking questions and Chris Capri is answering your question. Former hedge fund broker, Chris Capri, of course. Student trade ideas, amazing. Lesson PDFs. I believe there's also a report, the options flow that, that Chris will put out. Uh, I believe it comes out on Sundays. Perfect yes. timing. Um, so there's a ton of resources here. 
Um, you've got uh, this tool here, Options Profit Calculator, which Chris will dive into it later. And there's a ton more coming in. I'm li literally, I cannot even talk about them. Okay, I cannot. But I can tell you that, you know, these are things that are being, are being worked on on the back end. And of course, um, you get Benzinga Pro included in the school because this is a great tool for every trader. All right. So um, I just wanted to show you that, guys, really quick. But yes, all the classes are recorded. We just went over the schedule. Um, does Chris Capri provide trade ideas? Yes, he does that in the school. Um, and he's got a pretty nice track record. You might want to trade with him. Let's see what else. Is this good for beginners or? Inter yes, this is this would be like the must take class for all beginners. Options is where everybody blows up their account and it doesn't have to be that way. OK, let's see. Um, sessions. Yes, the sessions are recorded. Uh, the schedule of the chat rooms, they're open 24 seven. All right. They're open 24 seven. Damn. I was looking at the stock a while ago. Beam. It's like this had this heart monitor thing. Um, I didn't know I had gone like that. So, but yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, price at renewal is the same as today with the discount. Does Chris provide education? Yes. This is called the Benzinga option school is this is the home of the education. Um, do you teach strategies from A to Z? Yes. And, um, all right. So yeah, that kind of covers most of the questions there, Chris, I'll be answering some of them in the chat. But yes, we are going to be posting the link so that you guys can join the room. You can join the, the classes and trade with Chris. Um, Chris, is there anything in particular that I know you're always adding things and things like that? You know, you got group education sessions on demand, full education sessions, live trading rooms, mentorship guidance, uh, ticker stock analysis. What am I missing here? Am I missing anything or did I cover it all? So uh, a couple of things, uh, the schedule for next semester and probably going forward uh, will be that five days a week. Uh, this will start um, uh, first week in January uh, and start January 6th next year. Five days a week, we'll start at market open. So we kind of had like office hours on Friday. It was a little bit just mostly Q&A. And then we had some uh, Monday to kind of set the tone for the week. So starting January 6th, we will have five days a week at market open. So we'll be there uh, with that. Also five days a week. Uh, right now we're only doing four, starting in January 6th, five days a week. We will have the market commentary. So 15 minutes before the market opens, I give the commentary, key support resistance levels, bullish, bearish trend. What do I think is going to happen with volatility, trade ideas, that kind of stuff. Um, and then also we are giving a, um, we're going to be adding a couple of videos uh, we're adding six new videos on how to adjust every single strategy. Like if you're doing a condor and our condor versus a butterfly or a brokering butterfly or a put spread or call spread, all these things, how to adjust each individual strategy and what the conditions you are looking for that. And then on top of it, we're adding videos. We added two videos in here, which are, and this is in the how to execute trade. So here we have our preferred broker is think or swim. And we have videos on how to execute single legs, double legs, triple legs, and four legs trades, like how to actually enter them in into thinkorswim. We also recently added two more videos, which is what are the indicators and timeframes that I trade with? Like how do I set up my charts and why? And then how to analyze the flows, today's flows in thinkorswim and determine are the overall flows bullish or the overall flows bearish? And how does that make a difference for my trading for today? Um, we are adding a few more things. Um, also as well, like how to analyze each individual option structure. Thinkorswim offers a great way to do that. <clears throat> so we're offering, we're giving a lesson on how to use the Thinkorswim tools to analyze your individual option structure. And then next year we're set to release some applications that will help you read options, order flow, open interest, gamma notion, all these things and stuff like that. So we got a lot in the pipeline right now, which is pretty badass stuff. Um, with that being said, I do want to move into one of the tools that we have right now for traders. And then I want to go into a tool that, or uh, go into a discussion we have with one of the Benzing Option School members. And then I want to talk about what I think going forward for uh, tomorrow. So we built this options profit calculator. There are some option trades where you have fixed risks, some of them open risks, but there are specific option strategies that you can trade where we will know what is the percentage chance that you will make money on this or lose money on this? What is the max profit potential? What is the max loss potential? In those situations, we built this little calculator that creates 
basically what it does is it punches in your data, you put in the data, and then it runs it through a simulator, which basically says, hey, if you take this strategy over 100 trades, the same trade set up over 100 trades, you will either end up in net profit or in net loss. That's otherwise known as positive expectancy. That means if you take this setup 100 times, you may win or lose the next trade, but if you take it 100 times, you will end up net profitable or negative expectancy. You take this trade 100 times and over 100 times, you will end up losing money in this. So it's a great guide before you get into a trade on whether this trade based on how it's set up now has positive or negative expectancy. So let's think of something like, you know, like a vertical or something like that. Let's say I think the FOMC for random sake is going to come out, you know, with 50 basis points and they're going to probably ease up on heights going forward. So we think the market's going to, let's just say we speculate right now. We think the market's going to rally, right? And let's say we want to buy like a 396 uh, call for next Friday and sell the 405, right? Okay, so if we do this trade, it's going to it's going to cost us 391 and it is a $9 wide spread. Now, math quiz for everybody. If we have a $9 wide spread and it costs us a debit of 391, what is our max profit on this? So, who knows the answer to this? Quiz time. Zoom, Benzinga, whoever wants to answer. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, that's right cuz Rodrigo did it. My bad. My bad. All right, you should see it now. All right, so if you have a $9 wide spread and it's going to cost you $3.91, what's the max profit you can make on this trade? So who knows the answer? I'll give you guys 10 seconds. Yes, yes. $9 wide minus $3.91 means $5.09, yes, or $5.1 pretty much. So yes, very good. All right. So we can analyze this trade. Let me, uh, there we go. And here's the trade individually. It's a wonderful tool that Thinkorswim has, which allows us to analyze just this trade right here. All right. This blue line that you see here is the PL at expiry. And we have these little gold lines that we can slide back and forth. And based upon the statistics right now, it tells us we have about, so we're going to buy this call and we're going to sell this call. And right now, just based upon right now, the market's saying, hey, you have a 48.64% chance that you lose money on this one, right? At least a max loss on this one here. Then you have a 27.9% chance to either lose a little bit of money or hit your break even. Statistically, it's saying, hey, you have a 19.41% chance to close between break even and max profit. And we only have a 4.76 chance right now of hitting max profit. Now, I don't have to go through the simulator to tell you that this probably has negative expectancy. But let's say you don't know. You're not good at the math and you don't know. Well, we can do this right now. So we look at the max profit. We see 4.76. We'll just round this up to 5%. And we can see that we'll make a max profit of $5,090 on 10 contracts, right? So we go back to the calculator. And we go 5%, 5090 is the max profit, right? So if we take this trade 100 times, on all the winning trades, we're going to make about 25K in profits. But we have to do the losing trades as well. The losing trades, as you can see, is about 48, 48, 49% chance. We'll just make it 48.5% chance. We're going to lose max loss on this. And max loss on this is 39.10. So if I type in 48.54, or just 48.5, and max loss is 39.10, then we can see if we take this trade 100 times, we will lose, after 100 trades, on average, $16,000. So this trade has negative expectancy. And so unless we have some massive insight on how SPY is going to rally, we can use this calculator in the Benzing Option School to tell us ahead of time Hey, are we going to make money or lose money in this trade? Does it have positive or negative expectancy? If it has negative expectancy, then you should probably be like, hey, I probably shouldn't take this trade unless I have some like gangster psychic insight that the market's going to flip and change uh, by the time it hits expiry. So this is a pretty incredibly valuable tool for members to have 
that, hey, when you have these types of setups, you can just have the thing run the numbers for you and it'll tell you, kind of give you a guide ahead of time. Now, with that being said, I want to get into a discussion we had today with one of the members here. And this is super important. So for those of you in Zoom and those of you in YouTube, give me a one in the chat if you primarily trade single legs. Give me a two in the chat if you do not primarily trade single legs. So let me know. Richard Joe says, good evening, Chris. Good evening to you, Richard. Good to see you. This guy has his stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so one is primarily single legs. Got some twos, got a lot of ones. Okay, cool, cool. Twos. All right, all right, cool, cool. All right, so nice, nice. Okay, so this is very important for you that are trading single legs. This is a great discussion that we had earlier today. All right, so this student asked, hey, I noticed when you mentioned single legs, you are usually very cautious to hold them overnight due to theta decay. So I wonder if single legs are just best for day trading only. Mostly, if you did hold single legs overnight, what would the theta need to be? I'm curious. So this was a great discussion that we had about single legs. So for those of you that are saying, hey, I primarily trade single legs, this is going to be very important to you. For those of you that primarily trade multiple legs, this will hopefully give you another insight into single legs. So now when you buy a single leg, this is something we cover very in, like fully in depth in the Benzing Option School. We have entire lessons on single legs. And every single leg, single leg strategy you can take, we give a tear sheet. Hey, here's the outlook you should have when you do this. Here's your max loss. Here's your max risk. Here's the things you need to look at. Here's the ways you make money. Here's the ways you lose money. Super, super important. So let's just say you're someone who trades long calls, right? Okay, there are three ways to make money when you trade long calls. What are the three ways that you can make money trading long calls? Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. So there are three ways and three ways only you can make long call. Let me know. You can put it in the chat in Zoom or put it in the chat in Benzinga and the YouTube right now. Richard says, I mean, I bought 100 shares of a stock and sold it later. I've never run options. I'll copy that. So what are the three ways that you can make money? Up, down, sideways. If you're buying a call, if you're buying a call, there's three ways you can make money. Definitely not down. You could technically down, but it's like very low probability. And definitely not sideways. I mean, you could side, but 99% of the time won't happen. So if you're buying a call, what's the three ways that you can make money? Cheat with an eight ball. <laughs> you don't need an eight ball. You don't need to cheat with an eight ball. We gave uh, we gave recommendations this morning that panned out perfectly, and uh, you know students made money on that. Move fast to the upside. Yes. Okay. A better way to think about this is you can make money via the delta, you can make money via the gamma, and you can make money via the implied volatility going up from the time that you bought it. This is what otherwise known as the Vega component, right? So when you buy a call, you make money via delta, gamma, and implied volatility. Now, if you are day trading options, in the Benzinga Option School, we talk about specifically, we only recommend generally day trading zero to five DTE options, right? So this is our general recommendation. But let's say you're trading zero or one DTE options. Well, then... Because we're so close to expiry, the implied volatility component and the Vega component is being very, very small. It's not going to be worth that much. So you'd have to have, you know, usually it could be like spies, it could be one cent or something like that. So for every 10 implied volatility points of changes, you're going to make 10 times one 10 cents. That's not going to do much for your option generally. And the chances of spy jumping 10 volatility points in a day is like slim. So you're not going to make money on your day trading options via implied volatility, which means that you're primarily making your money via delta and gamma. When you're buying a call, you generally want the market to move up really far, really fast, as fast as, as quick, as high as possible, as quick as possible. That is what you're looking for. If the market chops like today, it's probably not the best for long calls, right? And this is if you're day trading. Now, if 
you buy an option that is over zero DT, you know, one, two, three, four, five, 30, 45 DTs. Well, you have four ways you can lose money with all long calls. That's the Delta market goes down. That's the gamma. That's the implied volatility going against you and theta. Now the student was asking, Hey, I notice when you trade long calls, you generally don't hold them overnight or you don't hold them that long because of the theta and they want to know why. And this is super, super important. So if you hold an option overnight, every single day you hold it overnight, that option will depreciate. How much will it depreciate by? The theta. And so if we look in the option chain, let me get rid of that. Okay, if we look in the option chain here, we can see that, let's take a look at say, let's say you bought a call that's expiring December 9th. If you bought the at the money 396 calls, this option has a theta of 203. You're long this call. So that means that the option is gonna depreciate by $2.03 by holding it overnight. That's like 90% of the value of the call. Every single day we hold an option, we have to pay that theta. Now, if we look at the same 396 call for December 16th, theta is much less. So the option is worth roughly 655. We're only gonna pay 41 cents in theta because it's further out in time. So now if you think about this, if you're long calls and you, you let's say you're long this call right now, let's say you bought it for five bucks and it's now worth 655. All right, you got a profit of 155 right now on the books, okay? But by holding it overnight, this thing's gonna lose 41 cents in value. So your 155 profit is really more like one, what is that? One 14. So you just lost roughly a third of your profit by holding it overnight. So when you hold it overnight, you have a depreciation cost, the theta. So why would I ever hold it overnight? The only time I would ever hold a long call overnight is if I believe either in the overnight session or in the next day's session that the value of this option will gain more than the theta. If I feel like, hey, spies could gain overnight, got some positive news out of Asia or Europe or something like that, markets are probably gonna continue. Or I feel like, hey, bulls are gonna be pretty aggressive right on the open tomorrow. We got some positive news in the, you know, at the end of the session that should carry into tomorrow. If I feel like, you know what, by holding this tomorrow, I can make more than this 41 cents in depreciation, then I should consider holding that trade overnight. But if I don't think I can make that up tomorrow, then I might as well close it before the market closes and not pay that theta. Does that make sense? Yes, no, as to the student's question on to why you would want to either hold it overnight or not hold it overnight. Give me a three in the chat if this makes sense. Give me a six in the chat if this does not. And if it doesn't, ask your question with the six. Is IV theta? No, those are different. IV is implied volatility. Theta is different. And for those of you posting in the Q&A, post your questions in the chat. I, I'll Please post all questions in the chat. Threes, 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 threes. No sixes. Oh my God, did I do that? Um, let's see. Okay, 1.5 times what, 100? For, for each contract, yes. So 1.55 would be, if you do one options contract, one options contract always equal, is the equivalent to 100 shares. So if you have a $1.55 in profit on one contract, that's $155, yes. If you have 10 contracts, that's $1,550. What about with short calls? Do you recommend them for those trading options with less cash? I do not recommend selling single leg options naked unless you have a lot of experience. How would I define a lot of experience? Probably like two to five years worth of trading. And you've probably done at least, at least on simulator, probably 200 to 500 
short calls and short puts. And my final requirement being you're already profitable. So you have to know Greeks. You have to um, understand really how single legs work. You have to have experience with them and you have to be really good at understanding volatility price section. Like if you have all these skills in place and you're pretty well experienced and you have a lot of repetitions and you understand all these things, then yes, I am okay with my students selling single legs, but they have to know exactly, they have to have a plan ahead of time. Hey, this is my potential risk on this. And these are the things I'm going to do to get out of it if it does X, Y, or Z. Like that has to all be thought out ahead of time. And they also have to have the discipline that when X, Y, or Z triggers, they will without doubt just close the trade regardless of PL. So if somebody has all those skills in place, then yes, I would recommend it. If you're missing any of those skills, then no. It would kind of be like saying, hey, do you recommend um, someone drive a Formula One car at max speed? And I'll say, hey, are you a Formula One driver? Do you have all the skills? Yes, go ahead. Do you not have the skills? No, don't drive that car because you'll probably hurt yourself. Hey, Chris, really quick here. Um, someone's yeah. asking in the chat there, uh, would this be how, what would be the best way to take advantage of this if they have a full-time job for the trades and yeah. education? Yeah, this is a great question. So if you have a full-time job, which most of my students do, then my recommendation would be this. First off, once a day or a few times a week, just commit to having a set time every single day or as many times you can per week that you will dedicate towards studying. It could be an hour, hour and a half, 45 minutes, whatever it is. And just say, hey, for this hour, whatever it is, the only thing I'm doing during this hour is studying options with Chris. And so my recommendation would be first to look at the market commentary and see how the flows manifested for the day. And look at the comments that, you know, the video that we had during that day and use that in terms of your analysis and say, okay, like, let's say you, what you, let's say you get home after market closes and you're like, Hey, how can I use this information to set up trades for the next day? Well, I would look at our flow analysis during the live of class, our flow analysis from the market commentary and the option flow report that we give every Sunday before the market opens, and then use that to kind of guide your trades for the week. So every single week. On Sunday before the market opens, I send out an option flow report. That's in this section right here. And in that report, I cover flows, you know, total open interest changes, all these different things. What do I think is the max move to the upside and the downside for the week? And traders can use that as a way to trade options for the week. So I would recommend every Sunday checking in with this and getting an idea of what the week should look like ahead. I would recommend spending a few minutes reading my morning market commentary and then just watching my class for some key notes about what I think about the markets. And then at that point, I would say, hey, base your trades based upon my analysis. If you can't be there for the live classes, no problem. If you have trade ideas in the questions for Chris area, just post your trades or your questions and say, hey, I'm thinking about this trader. Hey, it's student trade ideas. These are the different trade ideas I have. And you know what? You post it after market. I will analyze that first thing in the morning during the morning session. I'll say, hey, you had such and such trade idea. Here's my analysis of that trade idea. I like it because of this, this, and this, or I would avoid this trade because of this, this, and this. That's it. So for students who have full-time jobs, which a lot of my students do, you can either come to the morning sessions or you can watch the videos and the follow-up and the market commentary and the analysis after the market closes and use that to help base your trades. On top of it, you have access to these videos. Every video that we do, morning session, they're all saved. That's in the past live recordings. And then you can access the lessons anytime. Anytime, you can always go back to the lessons. So look at this as, hey, you get access for a year. You're using this year to build up your skills and knowledge and strategies and options. If somebody takes this seriously, there's no way they'll come in one way and end up at the same skill level at the end of the year. It's If anybody does the work, it's like literally impossible to see the options market the same way you did when you came in than when you come out. Every single student, I have hundreds of students over like 70 countries. Every single student that comes in at the beginning of the year, within months towards the end of the year, they're like, I totally see the market in a different way now. 
every single student. That is powerful. I've known students, I've known people who aren't students, they keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And there's just no growth from one year to the next. There's just none. Like maybe they build a few skills there, but there's just no growth in their trading. And yet I have students that come into my course and then when they come out of it, they do not see the markets the same. They see the market differently. They under the, Their level of knowledge and skill when they come out of it, it's like night and day. This is just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students that have had this experience. So yeah, fantastic question. Fantastic question. Uh, Sergio, go ahead and ask your question in the chat. We'll answer it there. So please ask in the chat, not in the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to take a few more questions and then I want to get into a little bit of analysis. Um, I only use Thinkorswim. Is there videos on how to physically enter these trades in Thinkorswim? Yes. We have videos on how to execute every single trade, every single strategy we cover in the course. Yes. Um, okay, Black Ops. Uh, so with a small account, you'd recommend starting with iron condors or multi-leg option trades only to minimize the risk of loss or buying single legs. So... If you buy a car put, there's fixed risk. There's no open-ended risk. There's fixed risk. So yeah, I would recommend starting off. If you're a beginner and you have a small account, I recommend either buying single legs or I recommend buying verticals. You know, bull call spread, bear put spread. You could you could do credit if you have if you have enough of a margin to do that, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of room. So I recommend generally being long options, not being short options. Yeah. You can be short options, but You'll need a decent amount of margin to do that, and you have to do it skillfully. If you don't feel like you have the skills to sell spreads, um, you know, within the range of your account and not risk too much, then I wouldn't recommend doing it. Yeah. Iron condors do have fixed risk, but they also require a little bit more margin. So that's why I recommend buying verticals. That would be a bull call spread or bear put spread or buying calls or buying puts. That's Those are ways you can control risk for very little money. Yeah. How about a stop loss if we have a single leg? You can do that if you're. So I think you're asking about if you sell single legs. You can do that, but you got to understand that your stop loss doesn't have to be respected. What do I mean by that? So let's say you sell a call, you know, at the 400 strike, and you have a stop loss that should get you out at 450, right? Okay. Well, if the market is moving really fast and it gets to say like 448. But then there's a big event that comes and the next print jumps up to like 475. Is your stop loss going to get you out at 4050? No. Stop loss is simply an order to get you out at that price if the price is available. But if that price never happens and the market jumps it, then the broker has to get you out at the next price available. So if it jumps from 4048 to 4075, You've just blown through your risk. So the stop loss can't fully mitigate the risk on a short single leg in and of itself. Super, super important. Would it get you out of 475 if that's the next price the broker can fill you at? If they can't fill you at that because the market's moving too fast, there's not enough liquidity, then they're going to try and fill you at the next price, which could be higher, could be lower. So that's why you can't rely upon stop losses to be like this guarantee because they aren't. Yeah. Um, Yusuf says, how can I access the iron condor since it's not available for thinker, swim, beginner, they allow it for, so generally if you're a level one, you can only buy and sell call, buy puts and, uh, buy calls. That's it. Yeah. 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 You'd have to, you'd have to increase your skill. Uh, they'd have to approve you for higher levels of options. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's here. Getting a few questions on my YouTube people. Do you have a course on selling zero DTE butterflies? Yeah, we have an entire lesson on day trading options. Yeah. And I would assume you're talking about selling iron butterflies, not iron condors. If you're talking about selling, um, I hope you're not talking about selling even flies. I hope you're talking about selling iron butterflies. If you're talking about broken wing butterflies, I have a specific class on broken wing butterflies, but we have an entire class on uh, day trading options. And, you know, yeah, day trading option strategies. We have an entire class on that. On top of it, as y'all might have noticed in the last few weeks, months, 
spies went to zero DTE five days a week. That means every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, they have options that expire that day. It used to be only Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We made the prediction at the beginning of the year that they said, hey, sometime, you know, now that they've gone to zero DTE on SPX, they're going to eventually do it for spies. And then after they do it for spies, they're going to do it for cues. We said this like months and months and months and months and months ago. And what happened within the last month? Five zero DT options for spies. And just in the last few weeks, they did the same for cues. So you'll probably start to see more and more of this again. With the change of spies going to zero DT five days a week and now cues, you're seeing a lot more day trading. On average, since they've gone to five DTs, between 40 and 50% of the total flows on the day are zero DTE options. So you kind of, if you want to trade options, it will help to either understand how day trading options work or at least build the skill yourself. So you either can learn to day trade or understand how that will affect the market. Because if you trade longer than that, you need to know how day trading flows are going to have a big impact upon your trade. Super, super important. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, all right. Last question from Chris Rutterman, and then I will um, kind of do some open Q&A. So Chris says, Chris, I don't have an account to trade options set up yet. Everyone I ask has a different recommendation, Tasty, E-Trade, et cetera. What is the main advantage of Thinkorswim be over the others? Um, first off, E-Trade is not, they're bad. They just have a very bad platform. I'm not a fan of them. I originally started with E-Trade and I, I left within months. Like I was just like, okay, I'm out. This is a bad platform. Um, I like Thinkorswim because it has everything. Anything you could possibly want to do in the options world, it has it. Tons of tools to help you, you know, understand options. Super simple, flexible option chain. It's super easy to set up trades for them. I just like it because it's an all pie. Like it does everything, you know, there's, it's not weak at anything. I feel like their charts, which is not part of the options portion, but their charts could be a little bit of adjustment, but I don't use Thinkorswim for my charts. I use TradingView for my charts. So I I like Thinkorswim because it does everything. Tastyworks, um, I've only used it briefly. I like the user interface, but I don't feel like it does as many things as Thinkorswim does. There's some cool tricks that it does, but keep in mind, the guy who runs Tastyworks is the guy who invented the Thinkorswim platform. So the Thinkorswim platform is just, it just does everything. It's like, it does it as all the utility could possibly. Black Ops is saying, learn options on Robinhood and now Thinkorswim looks like Chinese. <laughs> it's where I hold my shares though. I, yeah, I had that same first experience because you got to remember, I came from the FX world and in the FX world, platforms are super intuitive and user-friendly. Um, Thinkorswim was complicated, but honestly, within two weeks, I was like, yeah, I got this. This is all good. The great thing is TD has a tremendous library about all the videos. And, you know, if you have any questions on how to do something in Thinkorswim, they have tons of videos on it. So, yeah, within a week or two, you're going to feel like this is second nature. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I've. Uh, let's see. I think I've answered all the questions here and I have all the questions there. All right. I've got about 15, 20 more minutes. And so with that being said. I want to talk about one last thing or one last thing and then I'll do open Q&A. So I give trade ideas to my students. As members of the Benzing Option School, I share trade ideas and I also analyze student trade ideas. We have a whole section here, student trade ideas. And every single day I go over all the trade ideas my students have and I analyze them and I say, this is good for this reason and this reason, this reason, watch out for this. Maybe adjust your stop loss or take profit around here, or I'll say, eh, I don't like this trade because of this, or watch out for this, or watch out for this. So one of the toughest things about trading is that you're trading alone. You are trading alone. When you're behind your computer, I'm behind my four screens. You know, if I wasn't involved in the school, I wasn't a broker on Wall Street, I didn't trade for hedge fund, I would just be, you know, this lonely trader who didn't have access to other people. But that's one of the benefits of Benzing Option School is that not only do we have the live classes, we have this chat room 
where you can post your trade ideas. And once a day, I go through all the student trade ideas and I analyze every single one of them, every single one of them. And so I want you to think about what that would be like, that as you are learning options and building your skills, that if you say, hey, I'm thinking about getting a long call on this, I'm thinking about doing an iron condor on this or butterfly on this. Hey, Chris, what's your thoughts on that? What do you see in terms of the flows? What do you see in terms of these things? Would you take this trade or would you not take this trade and why? So I want you to think about what that would be like to get feedback on your trades like this. How many losing trades could you avoid? And what would that mean for your account to make less losing trades? And then what would it be like to potentially have a good trade idea and then get feedback from a two-decade veteran who is going to say, hey, look, this is a great trade idea. Here's where I would place my stop loss. Here's where I would go for my target. These are the things you got to watch out for. Like, I want you to think about what kind of confidence that would give you for the good trades that you pick and then how much information that would give you when you come up with the trade idea and you don't know whether it's a good trade idea or not, and then you get that feedback. So I just want you to think about that. But on top of it, we post trade ideas. And we haven't done, we're going to do the math at the end of the year, but I think the accuracy is clocking in right around 69%. So I know, yeah, for the last... 30 trades, roughly, the accuracy has been around 69%. So that generally means that for every 100 trades we take on the year, we'll win 69, we'll lose 31. So we give trade ideas, and they're all in here right now. You can see them all. Every single trade that we've made for the entire year, they're all in here. And we cover these live, and we also, you know, when we go through these live, we tell members, hey, this is what we're thinking. We told everybody ahead of time today, clear as day. With that theory in mind, we want to sell vol at the edges. And so we like either those on the menu or we'll evaluate an iron condor. So we can sell iron condors. I'm telling you ahead of time, this is the type of trades that I'm thinking of making and why. And then we go ahead and make that trade. And then we share it with our members. And then we share the P&L of that trade as we close the trade. Sometimes we close it live, sometimes we close it not live. Whatever we do, as soon as we close it, we post it to everybody and say, hey, trade closed. Here's the cost. Here's what we got for it. This is the PL, every single trade. So I want you to think about what that would be like to learn, earn while you learn. But then at the same time, if you make 100 trades on a year, to get feedback on every one of those trades before you make them. Like, what would that do for your trading? How much would that help you to make less losses, avoid some bad trades, and really enhance your good trades? Super, super important. All right. Let's see here. Question from Willie Woody. Hi, is there a platform that allows one to buy options without having to have a certain amount in one's account? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah, it's, you have to you have to Google that. Uh, somebody in Zoom is posting in Q and A. Uh, if you can, please post that in the Q in the chat, not in the Q and A. So if you're in Zoom, please post your questions in chat, not in the Q and A. I'll answer them there. Yeah. Uh, I see Mark Petrino in your chat members. Uh, no, he's not a chat member. These are not all the members. These are all just the different courses. So all those little images, those are just uh, the different courses that Benzinga has. They're not uh, members in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Willie Woody says, thank you. You're welcome. Good, sir. What are your thoughts on Robin Hood? I would avoid them like the plague. Not good for trading options. Not sophisticated platform. Don't get me wrong. I think Robinhood served a purpose to bring a lot of people who hadn't been trading stocks before into the market. But the bottom line is, is that it's a very limited resource to trade, especially options. They're just not, they do not give you enough data to trade options with any sort of skill or sophistication. So I do not recommend them. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I don't, I don't know how well they're going to do as a brokerage, you know, they're, there's a lot of vulnerabilities for them and uh, they're just losing clients consistently. So yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I uh, says, hi, Chris, do you still have a discord room? I have a discord room only for my second skies members. That's my separate business for Benzing option school members. We have this entire chat room here. Yeah. But yeah, that's only for uh second skies members. All right. Any last questions before I pass it on to Rodrigo and he kind of explain some of the benefits of the Benzinga Option School. Yeah, they can always post it there on the chat. And um, Chris, I know that 
um, you do have all sorts of traders there, right? You have people that, even people that trade stocks, right? Yes. Because ultimately- Yeah, I'm glad you- mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that, like, I mean, if, you, uh, if you're just trading stocks and you completely ignore options, you're just being ignorant because you want to. Like, there's so much data, so much information- and I always remember that day when you made that call on Peloton. I just happened to have, to have some calls on Peloton. And you're like, listen, I don't see anything above 40 because of the flow of the algos. And then literally like touched 40 and then went from 40 to like 20. So I made money on the way up and on the way down. So I think it's, I mean, I feel obviously, you know, the advanced traders get more out of it, but new traders also, you know, don't make those mistakes that, that typically, you know, could blow up accounts um, if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, no, I'm so glad you mentioned that. So here's here's the reality, which is that options volumes now are surpassing share volumes. And so what that means is now the options market is having a bigger impact upon how the stock, most stocks and most indices move on a day than the shares will. So even if you're not someone who wants to trade options, the bottom line is if the option market is now the biggest gorilla in the room, then you have to pay attention to that. So it's very, very important. Like if I was never going to trade options, I would still learn options just to understand how does the options market influence the stock market? You know, how, how can I use this information to buy and sell shares on any given day? It's also important to understand that Options does a better job of giving you clarity around positioning and order flow. What do I mean by that? So when we look at spies, let's just, you know, look at the different expires. Like for right now, we can see, you know, roughly where people are positioned. So we have this open interest and we have the volume on the day, right? Volume is just the number of contracts that are traded at that strike for that expiry. Open interest is the number of unsettled contracts that are still open. So we can see in large clusters of where they are. And, you know, we can see, wow, there was 153,000 contracts traded at the 400 strike. Okay, well, if tomorrow when I open my platform, this open interest goes from, say, 36,000 to like 50,000, then we know a decent chunk of those traders kept their positions overnight at that strike. So options gives me more clarity around where is the concentration of flows for what expiry and is it staying on the board or is it leaving after a day? That's very powerful information to see where the flows are positioned. You don't see that if you just trade shares. Like if you just trade shares on spies, you can only see the volume for the day. Like you can see like, oh wow, okay, we traded 60 million shares on the day. That's below the 10-day average. 10-day average was right around 72 million going in today. So there's less shares than the 10-day average. Yeah, and that's kind of helpful if we see that shares are being consistently under the 10-day average. That means real money macro players and traders aren't buying a whole lot of shares. They're less interested. And that's useful, but I can't tell whether this volume is, like the color is based upon whether the candle is bullish or bearish. But I don't know whether those transactions were truly bullish or bearish and which ones and how much. I don't know that. And I don't know, are these transactions that are coming into the market at this price or are they coming out of the market? Options gives me that information. It gives me more of like a three-dimensional look at to where the flows and positioning are. And we at Benzinga are building apps to help you visualize that flow how it changes on a day-by-day -day basis. How is this going to affect dealer hedging impacts? You know, this is something that people don't talk about with options. Some people do, but most people don't, which is that how the option dealers and market makers hedge and how is that going to influence the flows on the day? We talk about it in this course. So even if you're not trading options, if you're just a stock trader, you want to learn how, to, how options works and how that is influencing the share price on any given day. Because we just don't get that high resolution data just by buying and selling shares. But with options, we do. So it's super important we all understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. And when and where are you live? Uh, I'm live in the Benzing Option School five days a week. 
Um, right now we're at Market Open, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but starting January 6th, we'll be live at Market Open just for Benzing Option School members every Monday through Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. All right. I am going to call it a session because I got to take a break and then study for a final I have in a few hours. But Rodrigo is going to talk a little bit more about the school. We have a special going on right now. Gives you all kinds of access to my lessons. It's like it's like a no-brainer trial for seven days. It's like virtually no risk to you to sign up for a trial. And so we're offering this you know, huge offer right now for the holidays and everything like that. And so I hope you join before the discount runs out because we're probably going to raise the price by a few hundred bucks by next year, especially as these new applications come on board for Benzing Option School members. So with that being said, I'd like you to stay on with Rodrigo right now because he's going to talk about some of the benefits that I didn't talk about in the school, why you want to check it out. Also comes with Benzinga Pro. That's amazing. I love Benzinga Pro. I use it every single day. And so he's going to cover some things that I didn't. So Rodrigo. I'm going to pass it on to you. Hey, Chris, can you hear me? I can. Hey, man. No, I just want to say, look, man, this was a great session. Um, I know that you always, you know, are very well detailed, very organized with this stuff. So, guys, let's go ahead and make sure that, you know, everybody say thank you to Chris for being here. Let's go. One time. Uh, I appreciate it. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? All right, all right, all right. So, hey, I will see you in the school, brother. Good luck in the test there. I know um, you, you're working on some big things here, man, uh, and the tools, everybody, you know, we're all we're all excited about it. So um, thanks for being here, Chris. Appreciate you, man. Good seeing you all. Be well, and I'll see you next time. All right. All right, man. Uh, well, there you go, guys. Chris Capri, head trader at the Benzinga Option School. Um, as you can see, you know, he's very detailed, very well organized. There's a lot of information that goes into these sessions. Uh, if you ever want to go to the live class, you just click live class there. Boom. Uh, all the video libraries we were talking about. There's a welcome video. Hello, traders. This that is Chris Capri. Capri yes. Uh, Pre-recorded lessons. Okay. If you want to learn options, like stop looking around, man. Like this is it. There's nowhere else to like, I mean, come on, look at everything you got here. Um, how dealer hedging market gamma drive prices. Um, Let's see. I mean, how to hedge and neutralize risk with options, how to structure your option trades, swing trading leaps with options. OK, day trading option strategies. I mean, you guys got to watch this video. This one was a game changer for me. OK, this particular one, because I'm trading options, trading long and short volatility. Right. If you're losing money and you're not learning, it's because you don't you, you want to at this point. Right. You have this opportunity. Um, great deal here with Benzinga Pro, with all these amazing resources that Chris Capri, former hedge fund broker, made for all you guys. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else we got here. Introduction. See, this is for all the people that are new to options. You got to check this out. This is for you. Okay. Uh, introduction to option Greeks, introduction to basic option strategies, intro to options video. Let's check this one out. Hello. Licensing product. Uh, process. Yeah, I mean, this is get. a this this could be a college class, like straight up. Like this has the potential to like you know, like it's so well organized, detailed. I know Chris; he's very he's like that, and rightfully so, man. This is not a, this is not an easy subject. This is not a walk in the park. You know, we're not telling you that, but you know, with the right teachers, with the right resources, you're able to do this, and you can really you know turn yourself into an amazing options trader. That's what we're here for. That's that's the whole goal of this stuff, right? It's not just being here talking with you guys. It's helping you become a better trader, right? Helping you put more money in your pocket, helping you help yourself, basically, right? Introduction to uh, intermediate, right? So you got introduction to volatility, intro to intermediate option strategies, intro to option dealer and market maker hedging. Let's take a quick look. Hello, traders. This is Chris Capri, head of the Benzing Options. I'm in part two in the course okay, lessons. So, now, this is going to be a very brief summary of option dealer hedging. Yeah, I mean, at, this is all like amazing. T this zero, is next basically. level stuff. Like, I guarantee you've never seen this stuff. I guarantee you that. That's my guarantee here. Um, then you have the live rooms, right? This is amazing because you, you also get the trade ideas from Chris, entries, exits, all that sort of stuff, right? So um, you're able to make all of these trades with him. Let's see. Okay, this one was down 20%. This one was up 90%. Yep. I mean, you can see every entry, every exit, right? So see this, that one was like 125%, something like that. So 
Um, this is where you get the trade ideas. Then you have here where Chris does his, his market commentary. This is great. Like you need this stuff, right? Um, options flow report. I'm going to show you really quick what this is. This is done here at the Benzinga Option School by Chris Capri. Um, I mean, this is some pretty advanced stuff and you need to know this stuff. Like it's, you, you have to know this. If you want to be successful, you have to like, you know, dig a little deeper. Uh, you can't just scratch the surface and think you're, you know, Tarzan. So um, very important information, right? All the option market positioning from the week ahead, total calls, total puts, translation, gamma expiry. Like, I mean, this is some pretty intense stuff, guys. I'm not kidding. Like this is some real... Like you're talking to a former hedge fund broker, okay? Somebody who was really like solid, hard in the game. So it's not like a self-taught retail trader. This is real institutional experience, real institutional training that is being translated and given to you retail traders, you know, through the, through the form of the option school. Uh, I launched the school with Chris Capri. Um, I think it was in December of last year. I believe so. Like around there, like mid-December. And it's been a total success. People love it. People are, you know, it's helped so many traders out there. Like I cannot even tell you like how many emails I get a day of people just sh showing the love for Chris and appreciating, right? I mean, you would love someone that would help you make money, right? And save you money. Then on top of that, you get Benzinga Pro. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall, but I was talking about the stock uh, beam when it was like $3 here. And this is this is Pro, by the way. And this, this what this company does, it's like um, like heart monitoring. Like, you know, you put this thing on your chest, medical grade heart attack detection. Like it's some, it's got some really interesting patents um, and they've got some really good news, some good partnerships. Uh, by the way, Benzinga does PRs. Uh, let me show you here really quick. Where is this? Um, news. Okay. And then categories. And then you do exclusives, right? Right there. Those are the, those are the PRs that we do, right? So whenever these companies come into Benzinga, they want basically... Uh, to talk to their to to the retail trader, right? Benzinga is the home of the retail traders around the world. So, uh, whenever a company does a PR with Benzinga, they want to reach directly to the user, right? If you do PRs with like or anything like that, you know, you got like these other news places, you know, they all got a spin on it, right? So here at Benzinga, you know, we pride ourselves in being able to give you guys, um, you know, give you the information straight from the people, and you can make your own decision on what you want to do with that. Uh, but yeah, they, we've had some great people there. It looks like we had Kevin O'Leary here. Let's see. Kevin O'Leary says he's really pissed off at himself over involvement with FTX. Um, this is from Benzinga's Future of Crypto event. So if you guys don't know, I think there's a crypto event right now that Benzinga's doing. I don't know where it is. I think it's New York. Um, but it looks like that, that was the interview with Kevin O'Leary they did there. Uh, Anthony Scaramucci. Okay. I mean... There's some really interesting things here. I mean, these are mostly companies that we're talking about, but of course the crypto event is pretty big. Oops. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could do a lot of things here, right? I mean, this stock, you know, you could have just bought and hold it and made money and, you know, just by listening to what we talk about here. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many other things here that you have pre-market scanners, aftermarket scanners. Um, yes. What's up, Salim? All right. I'm going to post that link for you guys um, so that you can get in the action there with Chris. Give me a quick moment. What's up, Richard? How are we doing, brother? Okay. So, Salam, what's up, man? So, that's the link where you guys can join. Remember, this does have Benzinga Pro. It includes it. It's part of, it's part of the school. And as you can see, you can do a lot of things with Pro. Um, it would take me like 20 hours to just go over everything because it's like an encyclopedia. It's it's basically the only competition out there to Bloomberg. And I really wouldn't even call it competition because we're focused here on the retail trader. All these things are fully customizable. You know, we're not catering to the to the multi-billion dollar hedge funds, even though some of them use pro, right? But we focus on making this as customizable as possible for retail traders, right? For traders. Uh, let me show you this. This is the movers tool. It's basically like a scanner. Um, you can use it pre-market, aftermarket. 30 minutes, one hour session. You can change the market cap if you want, you know, eliminate all these junk penny stocks, you know, nothing under five bucks if you want. And then you can find moves here, right? Let's say, let's do gainers only. All right, DocuSign. Damn, DocuSign, 48 bucks. This used to be a real company. So you can see how you can find some great opportunities here. I mean, DocuSign is a legit company. Um, I think it's a good company. 
but you know, I mean, you can really find good opportunities here. The other thing you can do, uh, task. This is another one. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, I remember when this was ripping. It just never stopped. It never stopped. IPO thirty bucks, only out to ninety dollars. Yeah, I was thinking. So I mean, you can see these stocks, these opportunities out there, going long, going short. <laughs> okay, Don. I don't know what this is, but you can find a lot of great opportunities. You can filter it by sector. You know, you can do energy, financials, healthcare, and then you can start looking into these. If you, you know, a lot of people love to do the healthcare, love to do the biotechs, whatever, all that stuff. You can see what's going on. And many times, you know, let's say you'll open this, see the stock moving. All you got to do is go here, go to news. You see what's going on. Why is it moving? You can see all the earnings are reported there as well. This is an amazing tool. I just wouldn't trade without it. Um, Jay DeRoma, uh, send me a quick email, brother, and we'll we'll set you up with something here. Let me post it for you. One sec. Okay. All right, folks. So yeah, Pro has a lot of stuff here. This is the options report, the options flow report that I was talking to you about uh, that Chris does. It goes out every uh, Sunday, Monday. Um, and let's see, here you got the trade ideas in the room. You pretty much have everything. Like there's nothing you're missing. And there's a bunch of tools that are coming out. So make sure, you know, you're, I mean, if you sign up now, you don't have to pay for it later, but you know, down the road, once it comes out, yeah, you will. But um, if you do sign up today, you basically are grandfathering yourself at this price before the before the price increase whenever all of the new tools come out because there's more to it this is not like set it and forget it kind of thing it's an ongoing project there's a lot of people that put a lot of work into making this you know what it is a great community a great platform all that sort of stuff <clears throat> so all right folks i think uh unless if anybody does have questions make sure to send an email and um you know we can go over any questions things like that that you have the school is great. You should try it. It's helped me a lot. I know it's going to help you a lot. There's no way you get into the school and you don't learn a thing unless you purposely don't want to learn. Um, but everybody there in the school is having a great time. They're learning. They're making less mistakes. They're making more money on their trades. And, you know, don't try to wing it. This is not the time to wing it. It's not 2020. We're not, you know, being pounded with all this QE anymore. You know, things in the market could go any way at this point, right? It's a very uncertain time for for the economy and a lot of other things. So as a trader, you, you know, you have to take advantage of these things. You have to be able to know how to, how to profit from these times that we're going through, right? It's not 2020. It's not, it's not the time to wing it. So folks, um, everybody here, thanks a lot for showing up. I appreciate you, your time, your attendance, your participation, big shout out to the community. You guys keep this whole thing going. Uh, you guys have made it what it is today. So I appreciate all you guys and girls. Let's go. Big shout out to you, right? Let's rip it here. All right, folks, I will see you tomorrow in the school. Make sure to email if you do have any questions. Um, good to see you too there, Michael. I'll see you there in the school. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you soon.
Thank <laughs> you. 